What is up guys, Alvaro here and welcome to the bilingual stock market channel again. On this channel we talk about the markets and we do it in English and Spanish as well so you can pick your preferred language. And in this video we have to talk about technicals guys because on last Friday both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 were absolutely killed However, the Russell 2000 some way somehow managed to pull off a green day. So let's break down some technicals in order to try to figure out what could be potentially happening in the markets next week. And at the end of this video, I am going to break down from a technical standpoint, AMC Entertainment, Virgin Galactic, Lucid Motors and good old Moderna. So with that further ado, let's get right into the video. And first of all, guys, keep in mind that on Wednesday, we are going to have the Federal Open Market Committee. So on Wednesday at 2 p.m., Mr. Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, is going to be talking about the economy. At 1 p.m., we are going to have the decision about the interest rate. We know that we are not going to see any hike in interest rates in at least two or three years. However, <clears throat> the markets are going to be expecting some sort of announcement regarding tapering so that is going to be a market mover on wednesday no doubt about it i think this is my personal opinion i could be mistaken obviously but i think that we are not going to see any tapering before november we will see what happens with that okay s p 500 guys it went down on last friday 0.91 percent and it closed last friday's trading session at 4432 points and I need to give an applause to the bears. They did the job, guys. They came for the big tech companies and it was a bloodbath, pretty much. So I am going to zoom in here on the four hour shirt and the most important task, guys, and this is something that I said in the video that we posted last Thursday, the most important task for the bears in the upcoming days, I said, was taking on 4440. And that's what they did and the bulls managed to find support on friday at 40 44 20 and they closed last friday's trading session at 44 32 4432 points so what is going to be the most important task for the bears of the s p 500 next week well the most important task is going to be taking on this 180 sma on the four hour chart near 4400 and mind you guys once this 180 SMA happens to be broken to the downside, the bears are going to have to deal with 43.95. That's a previous area of overhead resistance that acted as such for the S&P 500 back on July 14, and it also did it back on July 13. And we are also talking about a former all-time high in the S&P 500. If the bears happen to be able to accomplish this task of uh, this task sorry of taking on the 180 sma on the four hour and at the same time taking on 43.95 this is going to be good night irene no doubt about it that implies that we are going to see a at least tiny correction process in the case of the s p 500 take a look guys at how this 180 sma has been respected throughout this year and the only occasion in which the bears managed to break this 100 180 sma to the downside was back in early may and when that happened guys when the bears take on this 180 sma to the downside we saw a pullback in the s p 500 of 5.30 percent so let's say that the same thing happens on this occasion let's say that the bears can take on this 180 sma to the downside so what are we talking about if we happen to see a 5.3 percent pullback that would take the s p 500 down to 4300 that could be the final destination of the bears in the case of the s p and in terms of what the bulls would have to do next week the main task would be reconquering 4440 
which was an area of support that the bears of the S&P couldn't break to the downside. And on uh, Thursday, on last Thursday and last Wednesday, so that is going to be the main task for the bulls of the S&P. Keep in mind, guys, that 44.40 is a previous area of support and resistance. And if the bulls manage to reconquer 44.40, then the other important homework or task for them is going to be reconquering 44.75, which also happens to be a previous area of support and resistance for the bulls. So next week is definitely going to be, uh, we're going to see a definition of what is going to happen in the case of the S&P in at least the mid term. And in the case of the NASDAQ 100, this index also got decimated on Friday because most of the big tech companies got killed. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Netflix. So as I just said, when I was breaking down the S&P 500, the bears came for the big tech stocks and they did their job, guys. I got to give them that. So Nasdaq 100 went down on Friday 1.18%. It was a, a sizable drop in the case of this index and it closed at 15,333 points. So what's the most important task for the bears of the Nasdaq 100? The main task or the most immediate task that they need to carry out would be taking on 15,270 points. 15,270 points is a previous area of support that already acted as such for the NDX back on August 26th. And if that area of support happens to be broken to the downside, then we are going to see showtime for the birth uh, of the NASDAQ 100, because then they are going to have to deal with 15,143 points. 15,143 points is a previous area of support that already acted as such for the bulls of the NDX back on August 20th. And... You guys know that from a technical standpoint, both bears and bulls love visiting breakout candles or former breakout candles to the upside or to the downside. In the case of this area that I just told you guys about, 15,150 points, let's just uh, round it up. So at 15,150 points, we have the base of this breakout candle to the upside that was formed in the case of the NASDAQ 100 back on August 23rd. And on top of that, guys, 15,150 points is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the NDX failed on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 occasions before. And we are also talking about a former all-time high in the case of the NDX. So if the bears happen to take on, happen to break to the downside 15,150 points at the same time they are going to be breaking this 180 SMA to the downside and this is going to be a good night Irene for the NDX that would imply that we are going to see a correction process in the case of the Nasdaq 100 and when it comes to the bulls guys the most important task that they would need to carry out in the upcoming week would be reconquering 15,400 points and then reconquering 15,500 points but as of now the NDX is looking very bearish guys and the relative strength index is at 36 points so we could see more downside activity on monday and tuesday as well and obviously whatever is going to happen next week in the case of the nasdaq 100 is going to depend on pretty much whatever mr money printing says on on wednesday yeah uh because of the federal open market committee and when it comes to the russell 2000 so this was pretty much the surprise of the day guys the russell ended up going up 0.15 percent and now the question is are we going to see a rotation back into small cap stocks because a lot of small cap stocks had a very good day Last Friday, I am talking about workers, I am talking about Ideonomics and VTech, Clover Health. So, is the big money 
getting out of the most of the big tech companies that went, we can make the case that have gone too far too fast. And now we are going to see some of the big money of Wall Street coming back into small cap stocks, which have been absolutely decimated since early February. That that's that's a scenario that we need to keep a close watch on. So in the case of the Russell 2000, guys, the most important task for the bulls of this index next week would be reconquering the 180 SMA on the four hour share at 2,250 points, starting to consolidate slightly above that area and then filling the gap up to the impossible resistance so far for the bulls of the Russell 2000 at 2,360 points which is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the Russell already failed on one, two, and three occasions. And we are also talking about the upper line of this horizontal channel in which the Russell 2000 has been trading since early February. So the bulls did a very good job in the case of the Russell. And if we take a look at the relative strength index of this index on the four hour chart, it is at 47 points, guys. So we can make the case that this index is at a a very healthy spot as of now from a technical standpoint and who knows guys if i happen to be right and we can actually see a rotation back into small cap stocks i think that this gap up to 2360 points could be easily filled in the course of the up coming week and now let's go ahead and take a look at the first stock of this video which is going to be amc entertainment which went down today, uh, sorry guys, last Friday, even though most of the small cap stocks uh, did pretty well. So AMC went down 4% and it closed last Friday's trading session at $44.20. So I am going to zoom in here on the 4-hour chart. And something that the bulls of AMC need to keep in mind for next week is going to be avoiding $42, it will be broken to the downside. That would be very, but very negative. And keep in mind, guys, that this golden cross is still in effect because uh, AMC has been able to respect the 180 SMA, this area at around $39.70 or $40, or $40 hasn't been broken to the downside. So this golden cross is still in effect but the bulls need to avoid 42 bucks to be broken to the downside. Actually, guys, in terms of taking any trade on AMC, 42 bucks, if happens to be visited, if that area happens to be visited, and if a good support happens to be found over there, that's a very decent spot in order to pick up some shares of AMC. Remember that 42 bucks is a previous area of lower support that already acted as such for AMC back on September 3rd, but we are also talking about a former area of support that acted as such on one, two, and three occasions back in the beginning of June. So that's a very important spot for the bulls of AMC. In terms of overhead resistance, the most important area or the most two important resistances that the bulls of AMC need to take on in the course of next week would be, first of all, $46, which is an area in which the bulls failed on last Friday, and then $48 or $49 each, which, which is uh, an area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of AMC have failed on one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven occasions in the course of the last two or three weeks so the bulls need to take on those two areas of overhead resistances guys 40 uh, 40 40 46 dollars and 48 dollars and the most uh, let's say convenient scenario for the bulls of amc would be taking on those two overhead resistances as i just said 46 and 48 dollars and starting to consolidate slightly above 48 dollars in order to gather momentum to make another push higher and potentially pay a visit 
miss it, and maybe, why not, burst above 52 bucks. 52 bucks is a previous area of support that already acted as such for AMC on one, two, three, four, and five occasions throughout June. So watch out for those spots. They are going to be very, but very important in technical terms for AMC. First, the lower support at 42 bucks and the 180 SMA on the four hour chart, those two areas have to be kept as uh, lower supports and after that then the bulls or the most important task for the bulls of amc would be taken on 46 dollars and then 48 dollars and the second stock of this video is going to be virgin galactic and oh boy this is a stock that you guys tell me a lot to go over so virgin galactic went up on friday talking about small cap stocks so Virgin Galactic went up 7.88% and it closed last Friday's trading session at $26.42. And I actually, I think that I am holding the bag here, guys. Let me check on that because I think that I own 100 shares of Virgin Galactic. I haven't wanted to sell covert goals because I know that at some point in time when we get good news about Virgin Galactic, I am not actually holding the bag. Take a look. I own 100 shares at an average cost of $26.19, and as of now, I have an unrealized gain of 9 bucks. How about that, huh? So, I haven't wanted to sell covered calls over here, guys, because this is a very volatile stock, and every single time that we get good news, it runs up like crazy. So, I don't want to lose the upside potential. The RSI... Um, taking into account that Virgin Galactic went up on Friday almost 8%, so the RSI is getting once again a bit overheated. However, guys, take a look at how the stock of this company is pretty much accustomed to trade with its RSI being very elevated. So the RSI of Virgin Galactic, guys, got up to 91 points back on June 25th. So in terms of SPCE, we can make the case that 71 points is not a very overheated level for the relative strength index. So watch out for Virgin Galactic, guys, because take a look at how we closed last Friday's trading session as slightly below this 180 SMA on the 4-hour chart. And right above or immediately above this 180 SMA on the 4-hour chart, we have a very important spot of overhead resistance for Virgin Galactic at around $28. $28 is an area of overhead resistance in which the stock of this company failed back in the beginning of September, but we are also talking about a former area of lower support that already acted as such for Virgin Galactic back in mid-July. It also did it back on March 25th, and it also did it back on March 5th. So I'm thinking, guys, that if the good momentum keeps on going on for Virgin Galactic, watch out for the stock of this company bursting above the 180 SMA on the 4-hour shirt and $28, and maybe filling the gap up to the other important area of overhead resistance for Virgin Galactic at $33. $33 is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of SPC felt back on July 21st but we are also talking about a former area of support that acted as such back in June on several occasions and we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of Virgin Galactic felt back in late March, mid-March and also they also failed back in the course of January so if Virgin Galactic were able to make this push to the upside, let's say bursting above $28 and finding overhead resistance at 34 bucks, we're looking at a 17% profit, guys. This would be a phenomenal momentum trade. And in my case, I am going to my plan is or my price target in order to close the position that I just showed you guys would be selling out of my shares at $34. And the third stock of this video is going to be Lucid Motors. And in the case of Lucid, we got good news, guys. I want to read this for you. So let me get the news here on Robin Hood because the news... I, I gotta be honest with you, guys. I gotta get glasses because I am having 
I am I am having a hard time reading the news on Thinkorswim because you know the, the the letters are so but so small. So EV maker Lucid's luxury sedan gets 520 mile driving range rating. So let me read the news here for you. I think that this news came out on Thursday. I think right. So. The Lucid Group's uh, Air Dream Edition Range Luxury Sedan has received U.S. government certification for a range of 520 miles, the electric vehicle maker said on Thursday. The sedan was the longest-range EV rated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the company said. Rival Tesla's Model S Long Range has an EPA estimated range of 405 miles. So apparently Lucid is doing what they need to do. I still need to see Lucid starting to manufacture uh, their vehicles. But this is, I think, guys, and this is my personal opinion. I could be mistaken. You guys know that I am a Tesla bull. I even have a hat that proves it. I am a long-term investor in Tesla, but when I take a look at General Motors and Ford and Volkswagen and Mercedes and the other auto manufacturers, guys, they are extremely, but I mean extremely, behind Tesla. And I want a company such as Lucid to really offer some sort of competition to Tesla, because that would force Tesla to improve even more its vehicles. So I think that the, the, the news that I just uh, read for you is good news for Lucid, but that's also good news for Tesla. Tesla needs to have decent competitors. And as I just said, Ford, GM, Volkswagen, Mercedes, Audi, whatever. Bullshit. Those are not competitors to Tesla. Okay, Lucid. So what is going on here? Lucid went on an absolute tear on last Friday, going up 8.46% and it closed 8 point. Can you see? I, I need to get glasses, guys. It went up 8.46% and it closed last Friday's trading session at $22.96. So the relative strength index of Lucid is getting very overheated. It is at 77 points. Keep in mind, guys, that Lucid has an event on the 27th of September, they are going to be showing the, let's say, uh, the evolution of their manufacturing facility in Arizona. So I think that we, we still have a lot of hype uh, in regard to Lucid into that day into September 27. However, the relative strength index is very high. This is not a stock that is accustomed to trade with its uh, relative strength index at 90 or 95 points, uh, like Virgin Galactic. So I think, guys, that if tomorrow we happen to see a pullback of Lucid down to $21.60, which is an area of lower support that has already acted as such for the stock of this company on one, two, three, and four occasions before, but that it is also coinciding with the 180 SMA and the four hour chart. Then I think that that's a very interesting spot in order to pick up shares of Lucid. So if Lucid happens to pay a visit down to $21.60, I am going to be probably picking up 100 or 200 shares of Lucid, in which case my price target is going to be the next important area of overhead resistance for the stock of this company uh, at around $28. $28 is a previous area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of Lucid fell back on July 23rd. They also fell back on July 1st and they also fell back on June 7. So we are talking about a former area of overhead resistance that is supposed from a technical standpoint to act once again as overhead resistance for the bulls of Lucid. So if I were able to take this trade the way that I am describing it, picking up some shares at $21 and uh, let's say $21 or $20 or twenty and 80 cents, and if I sell out of those shares near $28, I could be making a 24% profit. That would be a very nice profit. And mind you guys, watch out for a buy the rumor or sell the news in the case of Lucid into September 27. You guys already know how that works like. And the last stock of this video 
It's going to be good old Moderna. And in the case of Moderna, the stock of this company went down on Friday 2.41% and it closed last Friday's trading session at $10. And sorry, it closed last, fri last Friday's trading session at $430. It went down $10. Sorry about that. And guys, check this out. I'm going to pull up here the one day, one minute. And Moderna was all over the place on last Friday because everyone was waiting for the decision of the Federal Drug Administration in regard to Pfizer's booster shot, which was actually denied. So Moderna is obviously a stock that was supposed to be affected by that decision because eventually if the booster shot of Pfizer happened to be approved, then obviously Moderna's uh, booster shot was uh, supposed to be approved uh, as well, right? So let me pull up here once again the four hour shirt. And I actually, let me show you, I started a position on Moderna last Friday. So I picked up 25 shares <clears throat> at an average cost of $429.41. And as of now, I have an unrealized loss of almost $90, $88.95. So what's my plan when it comes to the position that I just showed you in the case of Moderna? Guys, $411 is a very attractive price in order to pick up shares of modern and why well because 411 dollars acted as lower support on last friday's trading session but we are also talking about a former area of overhead resistance in which the bulls of the stock of this company felt back on september 3rd they also felt back on august 25th also back on august 23rd on august 18 as well and lastly they felt back on august 6th and and take a look at this and let me remind you what I just told you in the case of the Nasdaq 100. This is a breakout candle to the upside. This kind of candles or this kind of spots, when, I, when, I am, when we talk about the base of either a breakout candle to the upside or a breakout candle to the downside, they usually provide either support or resistance given the case. So in the case of $411, we are talking about a former area of resistance that on top of that coincides on the four hour chart with the base of this breakout candle to the upside so this is a very decent spot or this is a very good spot from a technical standpoint in order to pick up shares of moderna and on top of that we are we have the 180 sma and the four hour chart getting closer to the 111 dollars so if moderna happens to pull back on monday or tomorrow Tomorrow, and if the stock of this company pays a visit down to $111, and if I happen to confirm from a technical standpoint that the stock of this company found a good support over there, I am going to be adding 25 more shares to the position that I just showed you. In which case, or for any intents and purposes, guys, even if I simply uh, keep the 25 shares that I just showed you, my price target in order to close this trade is going to be $448. So as of now, I am at $428. So if I happen to close this trade with the 25 shares that I own, selling out of those shares at $448, I am going to be making a 4.30%. If I happen to be able to average down my position, picking up 25 more shares at $111, I am going to end up having, guys, an average cost of $420. So if I happen to sell my 50 shares at $448, I could be making a 6% profit. So watch out for Moderna, guys, either consolidating slightly above $430 and then filling the gap up to $448 or maybe pulling back and paying a visit down to $411, finding a good support over there, and then bouncing back up. And with Moderna, I am going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for your attention, and thank you very much for hanging out with me once again. 
online. Remember and keep in mind, guys, that here on the Bilingual Stock Market channel, we are posting stock market update videos Mondays through Thursdays, three or four hours after the market closes. So if you want to get all of the notifications of all of our videos in a timely manner, you have to be subscribed to the channel, but you also need to activate the notification bell right up there. Follow us on Instagram as well, guys, at Bilingual Stock Market. And remember that this is the Bilingual Stock Market channel, the YouTube channel in which we talk about the markets, but we do it in English and Spanish as well. So you can pick your preferred language. But most importantly, this is the YouTube channel in which we know that the wonderful world of Wall Street is not for geniuses. It is for entrepreneurs just like you guys and myself. My name is Alvaro and I will see you guys tomorrow once again, three or four hours after the market closes. You guys have a very nice Sunday. Peace out.